This is episode 642. And today we're going to talk about three easy ways to master self-discipline. Now, they may be easy, but they may not be simple. Or they could be simple, but they may not be easy. Let's investigate this a little bit more. You know, self-discipline, it really is not a walk in the park for many, if not most people. Uh, I mean, there's, there, there, there may be parts of lo- your life or that is disciplined. There's others that aren't. But generally speaking, how we do anything is, how, is a reflection of how we do everything. So if you're not completely disciplined in one area of your life, most likely that shows up in a lot of areas of your life. And, and we'll take a look at dis, you know, what self-discipline really can involve, because it can go to extremes, right? Zero to 100. But, you know, but it is, it's one of those things that isn't easy. We say we're going to do something, and then we back out of it. We do something else. We find a, quote, reason, excuse to do something else. But, you know, in fact... It really is quite hard to mo- to muster and to to stay intentional with self discipline, and most willpower and most you know these they just fail in their first few attempts. Um, people will try to be disciplined, and so one of the things you know we talked a little bit ago about habits, and you could check out Atomic Habits as well, is starting off small and starting off significant. Like what's the minimum? that you can do for meditation? What's the minimum you can walk? And then increasing it, and but just staying disciplined to that goal. So those, those are things that I work with, with clients on to help build that discipline muscle. But you, know, you don't need to live a life of a monk um, in order to self-master discipline, right? They seem to be awfully good at it, you know, the monks, the Shaolin monks, the Buddhist monks, the Tibetans. And yes, they live in a different lifestyle than we live in. So that discipline may be perceived to be easier. But we have, which is a good thing, we have a bunch of... Uh, uh, our life is full of, of of distractions. It's full of commitments. It's full of, you know, eating, nutrition, working out, uh, relationships... We can just pick one of those and create a minimum that we want to do with it and see it through, and that will be the start of discipline. So the good thing is we have a variety of topics we can focus our discipline on. Once we establish it, we can move to another topic. You know, again, the wheel of life is a good example. You know, you have your career, you have your relationships, you have your uh, recreation, you have your personal development, you have your spirituality. So the wheel of life is encompasses the major areas of your life, and what you have to do is pick one of them. You don't, you can't master all of them. You can't be disciplined in all of them at the same time. It really is impossible. So you pick one area of your life that you want to exhibit self-discipline, determine what the minimum amount is that you can do, and do it. That's kind of a, an easy way to talk about it. Um, but you need lots of time, right? You need time to make it work. You can't just wake up and be disciplined one time. One time does not demonstrate discipline. Two times does not demonstrate discipline. Three times does not demonstrate discipline. It takes a significant amount of times of doing something Even if stuff comes up, you stay with it, and that's all about mastering discipline. It doesn't happen overnight, and the thing that you have to understand with discipline is you need obstacles, you need challenges, you need, quote, excuses or reasons that you overcome to stay disciplined. If you allow the excuses and reasons to take you off track, that is becoming undisciplined. So we need to stay, and this is why a lot of folks will say, oh, we're going to redo my diet. I'm going to redo, I'm going to start working out five times a week. And they haven't even worked out for 10 minutes in the last year. And they're going to work out an hour every day for five days a week. It's just not going to happen. People set themselves up for failure over and over and over again. So when we start looking at some of these ways to develop self-mastery, um, it should be obvious or not obvious, evident 
that we want to start small. We want to start with a, mi a minimum. Do that for X amount of times and then increase it 1% to 10%. So the first thing with mastering self-discipline, it may be like, oh, yeah, I know that, but 100% committed to your goal, which means nothing is going to get in your way. Nothing. Um, commitment is one of the four C's in mental strength, and that is you set a goal and see it through to the end. What most people make a mistake is when they set a goal that is totally unrealistic because they've never done anything like it before, and two, they, they anticipate that they can get more done in less time. So we want to reverse that. We want to say, okay, if I'm going to go to the gym five times a week for this coming week, that may be a little bit far-fetching. So we would say what the goal would be is I'm going to go one time this week, one time next week, and then the third week I'm going to go twice. But whatever that goal is, you have to be committed to it. This is why we want to make it easy to commit to. If something is so outrageous, like if you've been eating 3,000 calories a day and you go, I'm going to go, I'm going to eat 500 calories for a month, you're going to fail. Absolutely going to fail. No matter how much mental strength, how much it, the habit of eating 3,000 calories is there. But if you can have that goal, it's like, you know what? I'm going to eat 2,800 for this week and I'm absolutely committed to it. Then you will, then that will be the start of self discipline. But you have to be 100% committed to your goal. And this is where a coach can help you understand, is this goal realistic? Is the time frame reasonable? Is this goal going to motivate you? Is this something that you've never done before, right? All of these things come into play. That's why, you know, this may be easy, but it's not simple. Number two, don't be the biggest obstacle to your success, which most of us are. We set, we do something, and then we use others, family, work, friends, as an ex, as a quote reason to not do what we committed to. And when we commit to something, that means that you're going to give your word to you, your promise. And when you use these reasons as excuses, and I would challenge you to look up excuses versus reasons. Excuses are things that are a lot of it in your control. Reasons may be things out of your control. You're walking around, you fall down your stairs, you break the leg, you can't get to the gym. That's a reason. Um, you woke up late, you didn't feel like it, that's an excuse. Excuses don't help you achieve your goals. Reasons can, pre can slow you down, but they should never, reasons should never turn into excuse for not doing something. So you and you alone are responsible for your success. You and you alone are responsible for your failure. Because when we go back to number one, committed to your goal, that goal should be 90 to 100% in your control. That needs to be your control, whether it's nutrition, whether it's going for, you know, if you want to apply, for, if you say you want to get a promotion, well, part of that promotion is out of your control because it's the boss or the advisory board that is going to make the final decision. But what is in your control is presenting yourself in a powerful, professional way that compels them to give you that promotion. So the goal would be is have an interview for the promotion as opposed to the goal is to get a promotion because you, you can't control the other people. And this is the challenge with goals is many people set goals where they're giving their power away to somebody else or a group of people or a person, and then they don't reach their goal and they go, see, this is why I don't set goals. Well, the reason they, they didn't reach it is they put too much control outside of themselves. So this gets back to, to number two here is be the big, don't be the biggest obstacle to your success. Be the biggest reason for your success. And number three, say no like you mean it. Often, when people set goals, at least my clients, always comes up, I don't have time. Well, let's go look at what you did. What did you say yes to? Well, I said yes to helping my neighbor out. I said yes to doing extra work at work. I said yes to coaching. I said yes. All these things individually may be okay. 
But if your plate is full and you have a goal and there's no room for goal on your plate, you need to start removing some of that stuff. Because you need to say, no, I, no thank you, I'm not going to go out tonight. No thank you, we're not going to um, watch TV tonight. No, I'm not going to do that. You have to start saying no, which in reality is saying yes to your goal. So the other way is when you say yes to your goal, you say no to a lot of other things. And we are afraid to say no because we're afraid people aren't going to like us or we're going to get into an argument or other things. And what happens is when we project that out there, that's what happens. But if we, there are very many, 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 many ways where we can say no professionally if it's work-related, friendly if it's friend-related. Hey, can you pick me up from the airport tomorrow at uh, 4 o'clock? Geez, you know what? I had something on my calendar already. I'm sure that you can find an Uber and it'll be fine. Really? You Really? You can't help me? Hey, have you checked what time the Ubers go? So you can avoid saying no, but you can also say no like you mean it. Like, hey, can you pick me up? No, I really can't. Why? Well, I just can't. And we don't need to give reasons. This is a this a, is a hard line approach. We all want to make the other person. We all, when we give reasons, we don't want to make us feel bad. But we also try to help the other person understand why we're saying no because they assumed we would say yes to something. But this is again where coaching can come in very helpful is helping you exercise your no muscle. So. We want to be committed to our goal, making sure the goal is a proper SMART goal. We want to be the reason for our success, and we want to say no like we mean it. You know, just keep in mind, you and only you are responsible for your self-discipline. Notice the first word, self. That means you. Not other discipline, not my wife discipline, not my husband discipline, not my kids discipline, self-discipline. That falls squarely on your shoulders. If you're not doing something, if you're not getting it done, most likely there's a ton of excuses there which you think are reasons. But you and only you are responsible for your self-discipline. Achieving difficult goals require self-discipline. If you have a goal to wash the dishes, big friggin' deal. But if you have a goal to lose 20 pounds in a specific amount of time, that should be difficult. And it should require you to focus and change your thinking and change your behaviors. Really good goals change us. If they don't change us, they're just a to-do list. If they're a great goal, they're going to help us grow. And that growth comes from our self-discipline. So when you set your goal, you know, make sure that you understand that achieving difficult goals, such as climbing a mountain, hiking, doing something that may be physically demanding, it's going to require self-discipline to keep at it. And also self-discipline is a highly highly sought after skill. It may not be on the job description. You need to have self-discipline. But when you can exhibit it and know that, you know, prioritize, have self-discipline, do the urgent and important task first at work, that's going to come across with your quality of work, with your KPIs. It's going to come across in your interview style. It's going to come across that you have control over your environment. And that's what self-discipline gets back to, right? And that's, that is, you know, one of the C's, the other C in mental strength is control. Self-discipline equals control. When you have control over your life, the stuff that you can control, you will live a happier life, but you will also live a more productive life. So if you like this podcast and would like to see the show notes, you can visit warriormindcoach.com for more information. You can see some blog posts, more podcasts. You'll also see the ability to contact me for a breakthrough session. And also, since you'll be on the internet, please follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest under Warrior Mind.